God, I must have misunderstood him last night. Yeah. What's that? Um, Calvin's with me, too. Um, oh. He must have misunderstood last time, is what he said. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've been – you don't have to be accredited to award credentials to students. Okay. So, so why are you going to accreditation? Um, well, I think it's for, I mean, mainly, let's face it, it's for marketing reasons. It's so we can put a plaque on the wall. Um, I think it'll perhaps get us more publicity within the machining industry. And we want to be the best we can be, I guess. So that's, it was a challenge that we decided to take. So how, how did you go about doing it, George? Did uh, Is there paperwork online or through Brenda or what? Well, no, it's all directly with NIMS, and with NIMS. Uh, there, there is uh, money involved. So we, back in the beginning, we gave that, we, we um, wrote them a PO for $5,000, which includes uh, testing, the fees for testing for our students and also included the fees for accreditation. So the accreditation is about $1,500. And then um, you go and you, you send in an initial application, and then they send you what's called a self-study kit. And you go through there, and it tells you, you know, what your shop needs to look like and all the documentation you need to pull together for the visit. So we've been working on that now for about four months. And, okay. Um, yeah, so it's it's a bit time consuming, but uh, when we're done and if we're successful, uh, it's a three year accreditation, and I don't know if it you know if it gets us anything except that you know makes us feel good that we've basically uh, put together a program that they endorse, and you know a plaque on the wall, like I said taking over Mike Blizzard's job, and they would be doing the credentialing up there for instructors. Well, Mike, yeah, oh. Mike, came, Mike came here in December and uh, did a credentialing workshop for our instructors. So our instructors got 68 credentials, um, and that's part of being accredited is that all your instructors have to be credentialed in the topics that they teach. Okay, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. So again, if you're just going to give, if you're just awarding credentials to students, the instructors don't need to be credentialed. Right. Okay. All right. So we could potentially do that here, being that I'm credentialed. You're credentialed. Yep. That's right. Because uh, was he down there when you got credentialed? Who? George. Because he got credentialed uh, a year ago down there at Pueblo. Yeah, no, we weren't there for that. We weren't we weren't ready. So we we did the same thing. We invited Mike to come, and uh, he came the uh, second week in December. And um, our instructors, many of them, had spent um, some serious time in the fall, you know, getting getting some of the project work out of the way, so they didn't have to do it all when Mike was there. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Brenda. Hi, how are you, Michelle, George, Good. Calvin? Good. Is David here on there? Debbie yes. is on the call. Yay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start, and I <clears throat> want to be re real respectful of your time. <clears throat> I think because both George and Michelle's group um, has done a lot of the pre-work for uh, digital badges and machining. Um, it sh the, the workload should be pretty minor at this point in time, but there is going to be some kind of workload. Um, just so that we get everybody on the same page, because I have some call-in instructors, I'm going to go ahead and go through um, the actual um, roll call. Um, how do you... Um, so, so we can get a roll call in. So I'm going to start. I'm Brenda Prey. I'm here at the system office. I'm in charge of um, 
instructional design projects for all the tech grants as well as the new badging initiative and whatever else they put on my plate, which is kind of like Michelle's job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to Divi. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, uh, I'm Divi Kala. I'm a faculty at Metropolitan State University of Denver. George, did you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, George Newman, uh, Machining Program Director at Front Range Community College. Katie? Hi, I'm Katie Woodmancy. I'm an instructional designer for the CHAMP grant, and I've been working on the graphics um, for the badges. <laughs> so, Awesome. Um, it That's looks like cool. Linda, yeah. Uh, Linda, are you able to connect? Um, we'll come back to Linda. Michelle and Calvin, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Michelle Coster um, from Pike Peak Community College. Uh, Calvin, uh, Calvin Pam, did you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Pam Packer. I'm the project manager, the champ project manager for Red Rocks Community College. Awesome. Uh, Rita, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, quite well. I'm on Red Rocks Community College TTE director. Um, and then I have callers one, four, and five. So caller one, did you want to introduce yourself? Who is caller one? Well, hey. you're caller five. Oh. Ming Li, go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, Ming Li, uh, I'm at the Denver Department of Engineer and Engineering Technology. Awesome. Um, then I have a caller four. And how about a caller one? Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we have a really great group, and um, even though right now it looks small, we have about 15 people who are going to be working on this project. And like I said, um, because George and Michelle and Calvin have done a lot of the pre-work for everyone, um, and uh, Pueblo has done a lot of the pre-work as well, um, this is actually going to be um, pretty easy uh, as for time load. I estimate we should be able to get um, everything done on the at least the machining level one general badges by approximately within about an hour and a half of the team, each team's time. We're going to divide into sub teams. So um, just letting you know this is the open badges to attract and engage and deepen commitment to Colorado Community College system. Um, our agenda today was introductions, overview, defining our goal, and self-selecting into work groups. Um, just to give you a history of how digital badges are actually here at the system office, in 2013, um, we have Purdue, Penn State, and all of them actually getting together, Colorado State University and University of Colorado all launching a digital badging initiative. Uh, in May 2015, uh, Dr. McCallum announced that we were actually going to be doing um, digital badges in six areas, machining technology, engineering technology, occupational safety and health, process technology, telecommunications technology, and welding. So um, May 2015 is when I got the directive to um, actually start making this happen. So. I've been working the last almost nine months um, getting all the pieces together, including um, having our PLA process through Bitsy Cohen uh, revised uh, so that we could actually start issuing digital badges. Um, so right now we're going to start with, uh, we launched our technical math digital badges in uh, January. We're going to roll out with machining, hopefully by the end of the um, semester, spring semester. Engineering graphics, we'll try to roll those out by summer. And then faculty development badges for online and hybrid uh, instructors will go live hopefully around August of 2016. So that's kind of like how we're going. And then once we get this pilot up and running, um, 
then we'll start actually bringing on some of those other areas that Dr. McCallum has said that we're going to do digital badging in. Um, I'm talking super fast, but I wanted to let you know um, our first 11 machining badges are dictated by the NIMS, by our grant, the CHAMP grant that says we're going to actually do NIMS alignment and actually NIMS stuff. So what, what we end up doing is, um, is we actually sent out um, uh, requests for identify for the first 11 NIMS machining level one certifications. Give us your alignment for CCNS courses as well as their competencies. So we've already got that kind of alignment. And, and this sheet, I believe, is posted up in Basecamp, in our base camps. And if you don't have it, um, I'll, re I'll make sure it's loaded up there by the end of today so that you can actually take a look at it. So what's going to happen is um, for each of the 11 certifications, we're going to ask each team to come up with three to five actual competencies that encompass what a measurement, materials, and safety uh, machining level one badge means according to industry. If, if an industry partner actually looked at the badge that says measurements, materials, and safety, what is that actually going to mean to them? And what is the competencies they should be expecting from students who actually have that mastery badge, right? That skill-based badge. Okay. Then we're going to, yes, there's a question. Go ahead. So then after that, um, after you decide on three to five competencies from, and remember, badges are um, learner-focused, community-centered, and industry-driven. So we're wanting something that's going to completely make transparent what those competencies are that that student or that person who actually has that badge has. Um, then we're going to ask that you create that you um, create an image, whether it's a picture or something that actually signifies as soon as you see that picture, we're going to identify that with measurement materials and safety. Um, and then um, it was um, basically told to me that the only way a uh, student can actually earn this badge through the CHAMP process right now is if they actually take and pass the NIM certification. So as proof of evidence on the badge, they will be able to upload their um, certificate, their uh, certification from NIMS when they pass the test. Does any of this make sense, or do, am I just talking too fast? Give me some feedback on that. So uh, this is George. Let me repeat back to you what I just heard, okay? Sure. Yeah, you would like us to go into each of the 11 NIMS competencies in level one and pick out three to five uh, mini competencies or competencies that are necessary to be able to pass that NIMS skill. Uh, and put that in the first, the, the, the column to the right of the CCCNS core competencies. And then for each of those three to five, you would like us to go online and find an OER image to represent each one of those. And then uh, the, third, the last column, of course, is just already uh, done. So. Pick three to five competencies and find an image for each. Is that about what you're asking? Correct, except we only need one image per badge. So for measurements, materials, and safety, let's pretend you actually put out a ruler, a pair of safety goggles, and maybe some kind of metal or whatever you're machining and take an image of that, take a picture of that. <laughs> then that actual image would be would actually be added to the badge, baked onto the badge, so you have not only the title of the badge, but you have that image that you've actually decided that if an employer actually looks at that badge, they're going to know right away by the visual image that it is um, measurements, materials, and safety. So that make you're looking for either original photographs or photos that are OER. Correct, correct. On the image, is that a, a safety image if we're going with safety first, um, are, are we coming up with graphics to put on the badge itself? I'm hoping, um, 
especially with the NIM certifi certification, I'm hoping a photo, we can actually find a photograph for measurement materials and safety. When you think of that, put together the components that's gonna actually signify that and then just take a picture of it. Like I said, it could be something like uh, calipers for measurement, uh, materials that you're actually machining and safety like goggles and gloves or whatever you wanna do and take a picture of that. And we'll resize the image so that you don't have to worry about sizes. You just have to give us what do you think somebody from the outside looking in is gonna actually identify what that badge is by a, a small image. And I'll show you the way the badges look in just a minute. So we're gonna have one Im image for measurement materials and safety. The next group, whoever decides to take job planning, bench work and layout and take pictures of can have a blueprint and then on top of a blueprint, something about bench work or layout or uh, sheets with job planning steps um, or for manual ma machining skills, what kind of skills are easily identifiable for manual machining skills or grinding skills, right? Uh, this is George. Yeah. I, have a I have a suggestion for you. If sure, you like. sure. Uh, what I'm afraid of is if you leave that all up to us, you're going to get images that are not going to meet your satisfaction. Uh, we're not, we're not, I'm not a graphics person. Um, I'm just wondering if there's some other resource we could use that would use for us. It's, I mean, I don't know what kind of funding well, you have, but it's it me that, you know, maybe we should go outside to somebody or maybe somebody within a graphics department at one of the colleges to do this. And we could, we have no budget, right? We're, we're, oh, we have no budget, but um, we, Brenda, we, are, we, yeah. Pam, um, we actually might have a few photos from what we've done. I'm sorry, I'm actually on bigstock.com right now looking at what photo options we have. Um, I, I don't know if I can do this or not, but Red Rocks might be able to get them. They only cost about six bucks. So, um, and we already have some photos that we've already purchased. So I don't know what the rules are with using, I mean, it's all come, the money's all come from the same spot, right? Correct, correct. And so, since you purchased it, we have to actually, depending on what funding you used, it can be okay. shared throughout the all, right. So it can be shared throughout the consortium. The, and the reason I'm asking you subject matter experts to actually give us the ideas is because I'm not an expert in machining at all. So. It, the image I would choose might not be something totally relating to what it is. So that's what I need. I and I really appreciate uh, Pam actually coming up with a, a workable solution. So it's a matter of, okay, for grinding skills, what are some of the images that we need to look for? Is it just an actually handheld grinder? Oh. Is that what you're talking about there, right? It's a surface grinder. Right, see? Right, well, that's why we need to have, we but need I, to do the pictures. Yeah. yeah I think. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think we need to do the pictures, but I think we need to find pictures, you know, that are OER that we can use. I think if you, if we try to cre recreate them, we don't have lighting, we don't have, you know, professional photos. Right, and that's fine. That's fine. I don't, oh, man. Um, that's fine. We're, we're having a fire drill. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> lovely. Um, I'm ignoring that. I'll burn in the building. Um, so, <laughs> so what's going to happen is, so, so what we have now is for manual milling skills, somebody out of that group is going to actually choose three, three or five. It doesn't matter what it, overarching competencies that it, as soon as an actual um, company actually looks at the, um, the degree, the badge, they're going to be able to say, okay, here are the competencies. I know exactly what that, that, that person is supposed to be able to do by that certification. Um, so have I talked this to death? Do we all know kind of like what, what our goal set here is? Well, can I make a suggestion too? Absolutely. Maybe we can keep them as close as um, the co state competencies in those areas. So we could grab the competencies from the state and narrow them down, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, and that's why I made sure and put the courses you guys have listed as the state competencies in there. 
Um, but we didn't all agree that the same courses had the same uh, for measurements, materials, and safety. There was actually identified um, six courses, seven courses that actually taught those same kind of skills. So it would be a matter right. of somebody figuring those out, is actually figuring out which ones are the best to describe it. But I definitely think we should not go outside the state competencies as long as we can actually point them back to what the NIM, what, what we, what you as subject matter experts know that NIMS is going to be wanting. Okay. So then from that, just to give you an overview, um, we have to just remember that um, competencies is the demonstration of what a person knows and their ability to perform the skill or skill sets successfully. So that's what we're looking for, is what kind of competency is going to be easily recognized out in the industry. Um, our four types of badges are proficient, expert, master, and excellence. And right now, um, the depending on how everybody views everything, we're either going to have the NIMS badges or whatever, the machining level one badges as proficient or expert. And it's up to this group to decide whether we want to do the fact that proficient is a performs as has an academic knowledge and in and formal training or skill that expert performer able to see what needs to be achieved and how to achieve it. I'm assuming if we're talking about a national level, the person who actually has the um, measurement and the NIMS measurements um, materials and safety should actually have that expert skill, right? Yeah. So we should actually at minimum, yeah. Yeah. Do you agree, George? Yeah. So um, we we had this discussion when we were talking about uh, prior learning assessment and whether we should use the NIMS uh, testing as our you know basis for portfolio and demonstration of skill. And um, our our faculty felt that um, NIM if, if you pass the NIMS skill level in any area, you are an A student. Um, so it, it, gra it greatly exceeds uh, a C-level student that would be, you know, perhaps proficient or a B-level student, which we might deem to be proficient. Um, I, I would say expert, and, and the only reason why I wouldn't go any further than expert is because this is level one. And so, you know, it's expert at an entry level, okay? So I, I think expert is, is correct. Okay, so like if we actually look at a pyramid, you could have a series of proficient badges that would actually stack up to be an expert badge. And then you ha could have a series of expert badges that stack up to a master badge. Um, and then excellence is totally um, a separate category. So I think what George is actually talking about is, is actually it expert is like one level above proficiency. And we know all of our students can actually gain proficiency with a C or above. But what he's saying is expert is the A student, and that's what should be passing at a NIMS level. Does, yeah. does that make sense for everybody? For the yeah. three to five competencies that you're asking for, they are demonstration of expert at an expert level just because of the the fact that the NIMS um, projects and testing is, is not, it, it, it exceeds, um, uh, you know, what, what we offer in our, in our courses at this point. Did we have any other comments on that? Does everybody kind of follow along that thought process? I, I mean, if you have a disagreement, please voice it now because we don't want to get halfway into this project and then you guys say, well, you know, I'm rethinking whether we should say proficient or expert or master. How about Ming Lee and De Debbie? Is that going to work over at uh, MSU? Well, I think you know, it should, but uh, we don't offer that often, uh, that many often, uh, uh, you know, sharp you know, type you know, classes. Yes. I think the problem, the question for us would be if we accepted, if you guys uh, issue those. 
or take them as some uh, some uh, credit. And that would probably be dependent on upon how it actually fits into a course. And right now, mm -hmm. we'd have that. That's a discussion down the line. But I think it's the same. It's going to be the same conversation for engineering graphics. Okay. When we're when we're talking about additive manufacturing and 3D uh, printing, um, we're going to be talking about the same thing. Are are we going to start badging like lower level skills at proficient level and a much higher rate of skill or the integration of robotics inside a 3D printed arm? Does, is that giving you an expert? That kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So you're right now talking about the four levels that you know, uh, know we are going to put on the badge, right? Right. So, so you can actually see how the, all the badges are going to fit together eventually, correct? Okay. So you know, which one would be the highest one? Master. That, I, from my understanding, and what we've we've decided up here is that uh, a master is the ability to evaluate the effectiveness of the knowledge, meaning that they not only can do it, but they should be able to either supervise or teach somebody else. So if you actually have a student who um, has totally made an, a robotic articulated arm halfway through the semester and they're teaching other students how to do it, Mm -hmm. That to me is a master level, and most of your teachers are supposed to be at a master level or higher. Hey, Brenda, you know, maybe yeah, it'd be helpful, to, what you just provided was a really great example. I wonder if it would make sense, you know, to use some language like that with the master expert and proficient, saying a, master, a person with a master badge typically is someone who teaches, who is a TA, I don't know, who's completed a just like you said, X, Y, and Z, so that people have kind of a, um, using okay. language that I think more people would, would um, understand, understand is not the right word, but you know, um, just they get it versus okay. there's a lot of, you know, education language and all this. Okay. So from my understanding, if, if we actually have a student who actually goes beyond the expert, so if we have NIMS as the, the, the best student that has a national level, if they actually go beyond that and are actually teaching techniques or something like that, that would then be a master. So if we actually go back to our expert level, that is not only are they able to what? Give me some keywords for the, for an actual expert, Pam. Well, you mentioned an expert would be somebody who gets an A in the class or an A student. Um, and, and then proficient, you said that's somebody who, you know, does a good job, but isn't an expert. I mean, so something like that. Okay. I'm looking I can for add a that in. Lifeline here. Anybody? <laughs> Are we going to call a friend? <laughs> Hi, this is Rita. Um, as, a, as an instructor, I think it would be almost impossible to say a student graduating from a program is excellent, and I would really question whether they could be a master because. You really need to be working in the field, maybe after an internship. So maybe an expert would be the A student from the course, but maybe after they've completed an internship or some sort of um, work experience, then they could be a master. And after so many years, they could be excellent. It's, it's. I, I guess that from the teacher's standpoint, we. I don't. I, I don't think a single student could come out and say that they're even a master, much less excellent. I think I do if they if they come back and they start teaching. I I I really do. I've got a lot of students that want to come back and teach something. But don't they so have wouldn't that put them in the master category? But would they have experience before they can come back and teach? Uh, this, this is George. I, I I think we need to be very careful um, in in these trades that we're talking about because. Um, I don't think any of our programs would um, necessarily train somebody to be a master machinist. Um, so we have to be careful with that word. Um, that if, if the implication could be that the student uh, ha is at the same level as somebody who's been in the industry for 10 or 15 years to call them a master. Um, well. Right. Couldn't we set some parameters? They have to have some experience, too. They do that with um, other, you know, seven years of working under somebody that, 
you know, have some history, then they can come back and uh, get their master. I'm not saying seven years, but I'm yeah. saying. But this goes way beyond the project that we're trying to do right now, which is just to put badging into level one NIMS. I mean, yeah, I would say in the future, we ought to consider what a master these might entail. But, uh, well, for instance, I mean, using the word master, you you would expect that the student has achieved NIMS level two and even level three. And yeah, I agree with you, George. I agree with that. So I, I would put master to bed right now until our programs are beyond level one. Okay. So, George, what you're proposing is that most students would either earn a proficient or an expert badge, and the likelihood of them being, getting a master would probably isn't really, they're not, they're not, they haven't been doing it long enough is what I'm hearing you say? I, I, what I'm saying is that for this project, I think all our badges would be at the expert level for the competencies that they're being judged on, which would be uh, level one skills. If, I mean, if you go in and right. look at the gym skills, there's, you know, drill press level one. There's also drill press level two. There's manual mill level one and level two. And then there's CNC level one and two. So right now we're, we're concentrating on level one, which are entry level skills. So the person coming out, we could say, is an expert at manual machining level one. Um, I would think if you look at the definition of proficient, uh, informal education, well, we're, they're not getting an informal education, they're getting a formal education in our programs. Um, so I, I would say we would not be touching, the proficient badge to me would be for somebody who is on the job and has a chain, you know, maybe one to two years of experience on the job has never been in a formal training program and is proficient in some of these skills. But I don't think that's what we're, we're not being asked to create badges for people who have never been to our program, at least not at this point, right? Unless we want to actually use proficient for your non-credit courses, or are you having your non-credit people actually t uh, sit for the NIMS testing? Um, they can sit for the NIMS testing uh, if they want. I mean, our NIMS testing is optional. Okay. And so, yeah, we don't expect our non-credit students to go quite so far uh, with it. But um, once somebody has taken three of our non-credit classes, intro, intermediate, and advanced, they, they've learned pretty much everything that our credit students have learned in the one-year program. So they can certainly sit for those exams after they've you know, been with us a while. And okay. I wouldn't call it informal. I think that's, you know, selling it a little short. Okay. Okay. So it could be informal or formal education, either one. Um, well, okay. <laughs> no, I just, that, that was a question mark, not, I mean, not a statement. Did, where did these come from? These actually came from uh, the National Badge Alliance, as well as uh, modeled after Indiana University's and IBM's uh, definitions of badges. Okay. Um, well. But let's, for right now, we're going to agree that anybody who gets the first set of 11 machining badges, machining level one, is going to fall into the expert category. Um, and then we're going to actually go on from there. Does that make sense? Does that make that sense? I think that makes sense. The, the um, you know, if, if we ever get to the point where uh, Noel Ginsburg's project gets off the ground and the company. Basic. Yeah, basic. Yeah. Then, you know, you could be seeing maybe some of the proficiency badges, badges being awarded at that level. Okay. And what I hear is that there's just a little bit of controversy because of the whole apprenticeship type of language about master, journeyman, master, that kind of stuff, apprenticeship, that maybe masters might not be the best fit for that, but we can go revisit that later. 
Um, Cause right now I don't know if master would even be a student badge right at this point in time. I, I agree with that. Yeah. All right. So um, our goal for right now is to review the information gathered on the machining level course. We did that. We, we we're gonna define three to five competencies per machining level one certification, and then we're going to decide on an image for the badge. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, and it looks like um, we're going to go ahead and self-select into what we, what each of us wants to actually create, uh, be a part of on the, hmm, this group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and post um, on Basecamp, I'm going to post uh, we have enough for at least two people per group. You sign up for two, two groups and then you can talk it between yourselves. I'll post actually saying, okay, here's the manual milling skills one group, two people select into that, and then grinding skills, two people select into that. And then I will help facilitate the conversation between you guys if you need it. If not, you guys are welcome to use Basecamp to actually say, okay, these are the three types, three overarching competencies that I've pulled from the CCNS that I think an uh, actually employer or industry partner would actually understand this this badge. And here's some suggestions on photos. Um, and then I would like to um, check back in with everybody after three weeks. So set a, a meeting up in three weeks to actually, so we can go through and see if we've got any of the badges that are ready to be developed. Um, and Katie, if I shared my screen with you, could you actually pull up what some of the, um, the template of the machining badges look like? Yeah, I have, I actually have one up right now, so. Okay, so I'm gonna share, we, uh, Katie is our, um, designer for most of the badges that are coming out of the uh, project. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with her. I, I thought we said Pam was going to help us with the graphics. She is, but we actually need the actual badge design itself. Uh, so I'm going to turn over presentation to Katie. Did that work? Uh, nothing's popped. Uh, you're, oh, I am now the presenter. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Not yet. No. You need to go up to say share uh -huh. screen. Sure. There we go. Okay. Okay. It's slowly coming. <laughs> All right. Can you guys... There we go. There we go. Okay. So this is just a basic um, design. As you can see, there's no uh, center image, which is what we're looking for um, from you guys. So I've got the kind of exterior parts all designed out so, um, so that they're consistent, but now we just need that interior piece. Well, that makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> sometimes, having, sometimes having that visual helps, right? Um, so yeah. yeah, so we're just looking for something to fill fill the middle space in here for. Okay. Katie, can you, Katie, could you pull up like a uh, one of the um, technical math badges? Yeah. Okay, maybe not in here. It's a different folder. So there's a uh, technical math one, and that's probably not the best because that's actually a, a little bit more graphic. Here we go. Um, so these are simple graphics. Uh, with math, it was really easy to find um, vector graphics that fit, but I think we've agreed that that's probably not going to work so well with the machining. Um, so we can use actual pictures. And Katie, do you have Credly up or no? Uh, no, but I'm okay. probably. So if you drag the ball back to me beside your name okay. on the WebEx, I can become a host again and I can actually show them my screen. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Awesome. And this will be one of the last things that we actually show you guys. Um, so when we issue the badges, if we actually um, show you, um, <clears throat> and this is how we bake the badges. And as soon as it comes up, I'll show you on how actually um, So we actually go in and behind the metadata in the badge, we actually have um, the fact that the badge owner has mastered trigonometry essentials competencies of, and we actually list the competencies. And then if it's a, um, this is like for a uh, expert badge, and then it actually says the trigonometry essentials digital badge is a word on passing a standardized problem solving assessment at 80% or higher. And on the trigonometry functions and vectors and exponential and logarithmic functional assessments contained in the technical math for industry MOOC hosted on this for, and that's what it actually says. Um, so it actually gives when somebody has actually clicked on it, it actually, the employer or outside party can actually see all the details, not only the competencies, but they're actually given back to where that actual badge assessment or evidence is at. So that's where that, that is actually shown. Um, so for the um, machining badges, students are, not only will they have that, but it'll actually say in the wording of the badge when you click on it, this badge is not valid unless there's an attached piece of evidence, which happens to be the NIMS level one certification that the student possesses. So that way it's totally, um, not only can they look at the badge, but when they actually do the web part of the badge, the badge actually says the competencies that you guys are developing, as well as it'll say that this badge is not valid unless there's an actual certificate attached to it. And the students will have to upload their certificate to it. Does, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Sorry, we should have showed you the badge design first, but in our head. <laughs> It so made sense the other way around. Um, we figured it out. What? We figured it out. Oh, you guys are so intelligent. <laughs> I'm so glad I work with intelligent people <laughs> who are able to make inferences from limited information. Um, and that's all I have for now. So by by the end of Friday, everybody should be logging into the base camp and actually be self-selecting into the group that they want actually the actual uh, credential, NIMS credential, uh, machining level one uh, credential that they want to actually work on. And then on, next Monday, I'll send out emails saying, okay, George and Michelle are working on grinding skills one. And then I'll say like George and Calvin are working on another batch. So I'll actually make sure and make those connections for you guys so you know who you're working with and basically give you the thing, the repeat again. You need to develop three to five competencies that are that the industry partners or businesses can recognize that actually sum up that badge, the skills and competencies a student should have who possesses that badge, and then work on a graphic. Either give me an idea of what that graphic is and we can actually have um, um, somebody search for that graphic or actually give me a, JPEG, PNG, or GIF of that graphic that you want to use. Brenda? Hey, Brenda. Um, Brenda, yeah. this is Cam. I'm I'm happy to do that graphic piece. I don't feel as confident in my ability to to be to help with some of the other to look through the badge stuff. And so, if everybody's okay with that, I'd be happy to work with the small groups and just have them kind of tell me what they what to look for. And I'll go look for it. Do you know where Jesse? Well, awesome. So this is go ahead, George. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think any of us are going to be able, I mean, I don't know if there are instructors or faculty on the call, but I, I, I'm certainly not competent. I'm going to go sit down with my faculty. Yeah. So there, there are 11, there are 11 competencies, and I don't know how many different schools there are on the call, but 
are all all five schools represented today or not? We have four right now. So I guess we need to pick three. And, and I, I don't have a problem working solo. Um, and with, I'll just sit down with Larry Hartman, and we'll we'll we should be able to knock this out fairly easily. So um, if you know if, if all four schools want to take part, I mean I'll pick three for myself, and I don't we don't I don't need to be paired up. Okay, so what I hear what I hear is actually happening. Pam is going to actually look for the graphics. George is going to take three of the skill sets, and uh, it's Larry and George, and who else is on your team, George? Uh, just Larry and I. Okay. And Calvin and I can do that too, Brenda. Okay. Uh, and so you'll take three, so then that means we still have five left. Um, uh, who, who's here from, is anybody here from Pueblo? No, they ended up couldn't actually make it today. So I can actually ask Amy to do Amy's group. That's um, Greg White and yeah. who else down there? Somebody else down there right. to do three. I think that's easier that if we just each school take, you know, each school take three and one school take two. I think that we can get this done pretty easily. Now, okay. Question, I have one other question. Okay. I'm going to have to run mm -hmm. to another meeting here shortly. Uh -huh. so some, if you look at the what what actually happens in the NIMS project or in the NIMS testing, some of these competencies are fairly specific. Okay, for instance, in manual milling, one of the competencies might be single point threading. You're not going to find that in a CCCNS skill. So I think, well, I want to ask. Um, if we want to make one of these skills something that is very specific to the trade and specific to the NIMS testing, that's not word for word a CCCNS uh, competency, I think we will gain more credibility by doing that. Do we have any comments on I, I think that's a really good idea. If, if we are actually, if we are actually saying that this badge that we're generating out of the CCCS system for Front Range, because remember, Front Range is going to issue it, Pikes Peak's going to issue it, Pueblo's going to issue it, CCD's going to issue it, Red Rocks is going to issue it, um, then we actually need to have something that says, okay, but at this level, it's at a na you've, they've been tested at a national level. They have their national certification. It should be an overarching that if they take this badge to Oklahoma or, or South Dakota, people are going to say, okay, I totally understand what ma manual, mis manual milling skills level one is because of that competency. And that competency should be tied both to the NIMS competencies and if we can actually fit the backward design them into the uh, CCNS. So it, right, they should be a combination. It's going right. to be more, the NIMS is going to be um, more specific. Granular? It, well, it'll be included in one of the CCCNS competencies somewhere, but it'll, it'll mean more to the employer if it's a specific skill. And not all of them necessarily have to be that way, but I'm just asking if we have the leeway to go beyond. I mean, I realize that the CCCNS is 100%, and not all our courses are 100% as far as what we teach. But, um, again, I think you gain more credibility and understanding if we are more specific about a skill that a shop superintendent understands. So just so that we get consensus on all the five colleges, what we need to do is if you actually go off script, off CCNS, or somehow modify that, make an actual notation so that everybody can see that when we post these before we actually put them into the badges, that yeah. everybody actually agrees on the wording. Because I don't want, I yeah, don't want I Pueblo to actually create something that Front Range and uh, Pikes Peak are going to say, well, that doesn't make sense, any sense to us. So I want to actually have consensus on, yes, we all agree that this competency uh, makes sense for that actual badge. Yeah. 
Well, I think we, yeah, I think it'll be an iter iterative process. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So, um, George, do you care what badges you get, or do you want to just take the first three? Um, well, is, let me ask the, the other schools. Are you guys doing surface grinding? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't really think it matters. Uh, we can take the first three. So that's MM and S. Job planning, uh, bench work, and layout. Well, are and you manual doing milling. CNC turning? We aren't doing that yet. What? Are you doing CNC turning at your place? Oh yeah, we're, we're doing everything in level one. Okay. So we'll, so we'll, we'll take material we'll measurement and safety, job planning, bench work and layout, and what's the third one? Manual milling. I think you should take CNC turning because we're we're not quite there yet. So doing that. I okay. can't take that. I can't take that one. So there are two. There actually are two skills that are CNC turning. One is operations, and one is programming and operations. So um, we'll do. I, I'll actually do four. Okay, I'll do. How's that? Okay, well, actually, what you should course. do is, George. Why don't you pick the harder ones, and we'll leave the uh, the two top ones, which are uh, MMS and job planning and bench work and layout, to the very last to actually claim those. All right, so we'll do CNC, I'll do CNC mill and CNC lathe, how's that? That's four skills. Okay, that's great, George. We can do the, the grinding. You wanna do okay. manual milling? Sure. And manual milling and drill press. Okay. And then I'll get with Amy's group to figure out which, which three they're gonna do and then I'll have two left over. And we'll see, um, do you, uh, Pam, do you think Joe would be able to help us? You're not counting right. George is doing, I'm doing three. four, I'm doing three. Oh. It's only Seven. four left. So Amy will do three, and so we'll have one left. Well, what okay. I mean by that is Pike's Peak is doing it, Calvin and I. Yeah, I got that. Okay, sounds good. All right, I'll go ahead and put the uh, the information back up on Basecamp by the end of today, and then I'll reschedule a meeting three weeks from today. Is this a good time for everybody or no, not really? Three weeks from today is when? Three weeks from today would be? March 10th. Yeah, that's good for me. Uh, I'm not available, but it doesn't matter. If I'm just working on photos, you don't need to wait around for me. Well, how about the 17th, then? We'll make it March 17th. Oh, I think that's 16th. No. Okay, seven, yeah, in the afternoon, 17th works for me. 17th doesn't work for me, sorry. Okay. At all, Michelle? Um, yeah, if we start earlier, um, can we start at Can we start at 11? On what day? March 17th. Uh, no. What time, I can, George? I, I can do 17th in the afternoon. Okay. All righty then. Let's see. What about Wednesday the 16th? Wednesday the 16th. I'm, I'm open. Yeah, that works. Michelle, how about you? Yeah, I'm open from 1.30 on, or 1.30 to... Oh, that's not going to work. I'm open all morning. I teach all afternoon. So we'll try it at 11.30. Pam, is that going to work for you? I can make it work. Okay. Um, you for me. March? March 17th at 11.30. That's our next meeting date. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Said, I said I can't do it in the morning on the 17th. Oh. 16th. 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 Yes, 11.30. Got it. Yeah, I can. Just send me a calendar invite. It should be fine. Okay, awesome. How about you, Rita? I I can do it. Okay, and how about Divi and Ming Lee? Huh? How yeah. about Divi and Ming Lee, MSU? Well, we actually are not issuing the badges at this time. But don't you want to know what's going to be coming to your college? 
Uh, University? Course. Okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Off. I'm going to have to sign right. off. But I think All right. We, we know what we. The need. meeting is done. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, George. Bye. Thank you. Brenda. Yep. Okay. Hey, you. I'll be there for the first part of the meeting, but I can't be there for the second part. I teach at noon. That's okay. I think the next meeting will just be, do you guys have all your stuff? Um, can we go down and we'll just put your groups first saying, okay, do we all agree on these competencies? Because hopefully they're looking in base camp. You're going to write your competencies, put them in base camp, and then I'm going to remind them on Monday. Make sure you look at your competencies, and if you have any thoughts, put them down now because we're going to actually finalize them on the, 7th, the 16th. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, is everybody else still on? Uh, we do have we have some people on. Yes. Okay. I just don't. I'll just have to call you after that or after the meeting. I just have a couple other questions. Okay. Sounds good because we also have to talk about what um, what we're going to actually do for. Uh, I think the three D and. Uh, printing and is going to be a little bit harder because there is no standards. So, yeah, call me right. Uh, call me at two thirty. Can you call me at three two thirty? Because I have a meeting right here at two. Yep. Okay. So I'll talk to you at two thirty. Okay. Thanks. Uh huh. Bye. Bye. Bye.